a question on, on processing your emotions. Um, each of us has our own particular situations in life. Uh, for me, I have a wife and four children, uh, aging, ranging in age from seven through to 16. I imagine um, the best time to start processing your emotions is probably now. <laughs> Always. <laughs> But in a, in a practical sense, um, how can the, the everyday person actually, actually start processing their emotions but still take part in, in the real world and, and still handle their responsibilities? Uh, well you won't like my answer very much. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is that the answer is still now. <laughs> Deal with your emotion now. The reason why is remember it's your emotion that's affecting your so-called real world. So, so you know, most people ask this question of how can I be practical? Well, actually, when you think about it, your so-called practical right now is the result of effects of emotional conditions that were previously not dealt with, right? That has caused a lot of your pain or pleasure, of course, it, you know, there might be pleasurable experiences you're experiencing resulting from, your, from a soul condition too. But the instant you change your soul condition, your world changes. And, and it's, you, you'll be able to prove this to you once, to yourself once you feel it. So why delay the processing of your soul condition for any so-called practical reason? Because the most practical thing for you to do is actually change your soul condition right now. Right. We were talking about this sort of last night, weren't we, guys? Like how you know we were asking some practical questions about like business, for example. What's happening in your business right now is a result of your soul condition. It's not a result of the recession, and it's not the result of all these other. It's a result of your soul condition. So the fastest way for you to change what's happening in your business right now is to change your soul condition, not deal with the effects of your soul condition being in a different direction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You see, most of the time what we do when we go down this practical road is we're actually dealing with just the effects of something that we're not changing at the causal level. If I don't change it at the causal level, then I'm going to keep getting those effects. And so how pointless is that to my life? Quite pointless. That's why life gets really tiring because we're trying to <laughs> manage all of the effects. If we go for the causal straight away, things change really quickly and it's almost like a relief. Yeah. And the processing of those emotions, it's from, from what I've heard and, and read, it sounds it involves mainly crying. <laughs> Is that the case? <laughs> What's your emotion about crying, Dave? <laughs> A uh, practical one, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends on the emotion, Dave. So, um, if it's fear that you're processing, then you probably may not cry, but you may be shaking and trembling, and that your fear—that's how your body releases fear. You see that in an animal when it's scared, it, it goes into this state where it's shaking and trembling, and that's the state that we go into when we allow ourselves to feel the fear. Um, if it's if it's shame, it might be a different feeling. It might be waves of heat, like shameful heat. It might be sexual shame or other types of shame. And you'll feel these waves of feelings of, of disgust that pass through you that you may not be crying about. You, you will just feel these feelings of disgust and shame passing through you. If it's uh, anger, if it's childhood anger you need to release, then you probably want to be in front of a punching bag and just yelling and screaming and swearing and bashing the bag. If it's sadness or grief, then yes, you are going to cry, guaranteed. Um, so there is all different types of responses. Yeah. It's it's usually always a bodily response that accompanies the emotion because most of these emotions were shut down when we were children. That's how they became causal emotions. So the whole process of emotional processing is really just freeing that energy, if you like, or that emotion that we've stored for so long that creates our law of attraction. So it's it's always going to kind of look childlike in its expression because that's how it was formed and stored. Yeah. So it's just about allowing the emotion to come and, and just allowing it to run its course. Yeah. Yep. And most of us don't do that because we have judgment about emotion. 
And that judgment about emotion also entered us from our childhood because you think about what our parents did with about our emotions. When you cried, and you cried for five minutes, for most of us that might have been allowable, <laughs> you know, in our childhood. But when it was 15 minutes and it was going on too long for mum or dad to cope with, what would they then say to us? I'm going to give you something to cry about if you keep crying, right? So what they're doing now is they're shutting down the expression, the full expression of the childhood emotion, which stored it, and now I'm going to have to release that at another time. And so if we understand that all of this emotion, this so-called emotional processing we need to do, is just all about releasing stored emotion that through our life we, cho we chose to store rather than experience. And what generally happens when we decide then, oh, okay, I'm going to start releasing these emotions, I'll look at my law of attraction, we, we recognise, oh, that's triggered something, but suddenly I can't get to my tears or I can't get to my fear. And that's because we have this whole other layer which is our emotional blocks, which is all the things we were told when we were a kid, if you cry, I'll give you something to cry. So then we have to release the fear that we have about crying, if I cry I'll get harmed further. So we have to release that emotionally in order for us to get down to our tears. So sometimes it seems like when we start this process we're not getting anywhere because we're not crying or we're not feeling it. But it's because we, we need to recognise there's reasons why we're not doing it. We're blocked and that's an emotional thing as well. And if we just are gentle with ourselves in that process and go, okay, there's a reason why I'm not crying. What is the reason? And try and work through that emotionally. It eventually becomes quite easy. So really you have a layer of emotions which are your causal emotions, which are the ones that will change your law of attraction. Then you have a layer of emotions which we which would call the law of compensation type emotions, which are the emotions that enter your soul as a result of you doing things unloving in your life or choosing to do things unloving in your life. Then you have a layer of emotions which we would call blockages, fears about dealing with the under, those, those two emotions underneath. So they might be, you know, I'm afraid of crying because if I cry, my mum and dad ta taught me that my backside hurts when I, cr when I cry too much because they just give me a belting every time I cry. So this fear then is inside of me. Does that make sense? So that's my blockage emotion. Then we have a layer of emotion that we create, which we don't ever need to experience, which I'd call our emotions of self-deception. Right? These are, the, they are a group of emotions we create so we don't have to do all of the others. <laughs> and then, of course, we go into our intellect. So there's a whole layers of Im groups of emotions, if you like, that we need to dig down to. The actual act of feeling your blockages is a part of the process, just like the act of looking at your intellect is a part of the process. So your act of looking at your intellectual denial is a good part of the process because while you have the intellectual denial, you'll not get to the underlying emotion. And then when you work through your intellectual denial, then there's this emotional denial that you need to work through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you allow yourself to feel this emotional denial, then you're through that layer and then you get down to some law of compensation or emotions or, or causal emotion and experience those. And from a, a, a slightly different perspective, um, from the perspective of, of a child or an adolescent, when should we uh, encourage them to process their emotions? Like, for instance, if you had a toddler, toddler you know, throwing a tantrum somewhere, uh -huh. you know, do you just walk away and let them go? Or yeah, you, you know encourage them from? to process their emotion then and there, just like you should be doing <laughs> yourself. <laughs> but the, the question is born again from an emotional injury, 